Hi, this is Walt Medlin, uh, bariatric surgeon, bariatric surgical patient. Um, I'm one of the surgeons at Bariatric Medicine Institute in Salt Lake City, Utah, uh, and we do a lot of bariatric surgery. We do sleeve gastrectomy. We do a few gastric bypasses still, but we mostly do a duodenal switch as our um, bypass type operation of choice. Um, but sleeve gastrectomy is about 95% uh, of my practice currently. Uh, I think it's a really good tool for people who are willing to have surgery. Um, but we have a fair number of people out there, um, probably a majority of people who we never see because they really don't like our surgical options. Um, and that is sad because they are highly effective uh, and they are durable. Uh, they may not necessarily be permanent in everybody, but they are long-term treatments. Um, beneath surgery, there are medications, there's a, uh, diet programs and exercise programs that almost always don't give long-term results. Uh, certainly at one year and even two years, uh, 10 to 40 pound weight loss is not uncommon, uh, but most people really have a return to their starting weight within about four years. So we've got a couple of new uh, technologies that are out. Um, one that has uh, probably for most Americans not been uh, cost effective, which is the intragastric balloon. And if you look up uh, the Orbera or Reshape sites, uh, they'll tell you about that. We do put in balloons uh, and we think they're reasonable, uh, but again, I think most people um, find them uh, cost prohibitive for the duration uh, that they stay in for and the fact that they don't necessarily give um, long term coverage. So uh, I'm not going to go over every detail of these uh, new. Um, procedures, but I want to just introduce, especially to our patients in Utah, but uh, my friends in the Obesity Action Coalition uh, and uh, um, out there in the YouTube world, um, the Aspire uh, Assist is a, something you may have heard about. It actually comes out first in, in the popular literature and sort of news of the weird. It sounds like bulimia uh, in a bottle, but it's not. It's not, it's not recreating an eating disorder, um, but it it, um, it sounds like that, so definitely I want people to not just take what I'm saying today, but, but go do the research with the Aspire Assist website. Uh, this has been well researched by uh, people who I uh, respect a tremendous amount uh, uh, in medicine. Um, so long story short, just to show and tell, this is a, a tube that goes, um, it's put in through the mouth with an endoscope. Uh, and make a little incision uh, and, and basically pull this tube through uh, so that only a small portion of it is sticking out of the abdominal wall and then a day or two later or a week or two later assemble this little button. So all of this is on the inside of the patient's uh, inside the abdomen and this is just uh, below the below the rib cage above the belly button. That's all you really see but that is uh, carried while the uh, tube is in and it can stay in indefinitely. Um, we put in tubes like this. this is a gastrostomy tube, a stomach tube, and uh, surgeons and gastroenterologists put in thousands of tubes like this per year for feeding, uh, for people who've had a head injury or a stroke, for little babies who need feeding. Uh, we also put them in occasionally to decompress the uh, stomach uh, in people who have blockages down below. So this tube is designed with large side holes so that um, after eating, uh, your major meals of the day, you can assemble um, a little um, a little kit to the tube. Uh, you can do this in the bathroom quite easily. Uh, I'm not very adept at it, so pardon me if I. This usually takes about five minutes for people who know what they're doing once they're once they're used to it. Um, this little drain tube goes down to the toilet. This fills with water, uh, and uh, basically you connect this. To where that comes that button comes out of the abdominal wall and then you basically irrigate back uh, if the holes are blocked and then uh, with a couple of little switches here you drain uh, about a third of what you've eaten into the toilet uh, and and then you can clean this up and put it back in the bag quite easily uh, I think the first few times from what I've heard it takes 15 20 minutes but for the most part it's about a five minute uh, deal uh, a lot of people who've had this um, aspire in for several years or more than a year, a lot of times they'll only aspirate once a day or uh, once every other day with 
their main meal, if you will, and, and uh, as long as they know they can eat normally most of the time, uh, they don't uh, have uh, the need once they're down at their regular weight to, to aspirate several times a day. Now, this tube does a few things uh, that again make you eat more functionally, not less functionally. Number one, you really can't nibble through the day because you can't aspirate what uh, is a grazing type behavior. Number two, you really can't uh, drink a lot of high calorie liquids because they go right past and you can never really catch them. Uh, number three, uh, this really relies on you eating very slowly uh, and, and dissolving your food well because it won't pump uh, if, it's, uh, if it's not chewed well. So, so it promotes actually um, healthy behavior uh, for eating rather than maladaptive behavior. It also probably induces a lot of people to eat more um, protein uh, early on so that they do get that feeling of satisfaction. This is not a tool to overeat with. It's a tool to be able to eat a regular amount of food for fullness and then have it, have it be in there for uh, 20, 15 to 20 minutes, um, uh, but then bring enough of it out that you don't uh, absorb all those calories. Uh, but again, it's not a tool to overeat. Um, talking to the people at the company, it does allow, um, especially guys, um, so I'm a sleeve patient myself. I cannot go out and eat a 14 ounce ribeye. Um, I, I enjoy the heck out of a six or eight ounce filet, but I can't have the baked potato. If you have the Aspire, you can, the, on those few times a year, if you wanna go out on your business trip, or you know, if you're being taken out to the best steakhouse in town, you can have a big meal. You may not be able to pump it all. If you overfill the stomach, you actually can't aspirate that well. Um, but you're not constrained the way that I, I truly am constrained. I can't go eat uh, a larger than um, filling meal. I, I, I get good satisfaction with my sleeve early, but if I really overdo it, I will feel bad. And with the Aspire, you actually still have that option to sort of be a guy's guy. So apparently there are a few people who like that. Um, and I think this is a tool for people uh, as is the Apollo uh, overstitch device, a tool for people who don't want an operation. I think for most people who want an operation, we should do an operation. We know they're effective, we know they're durable. Um, I probably, if I had uh, that option now, would consider an Aspire as a test drive. I probably wouldn't consider it when I was 300 pounds to be my forever tool, um, but I think uh, some people are surprised at how long they, they keep it in, they, they really like it, and they don't need to change. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a stepping stone. That's probably a, a bias that surgeons have. All right, quickly, the um, Apollo overstitch device, and this is a mock-up. This is uh, not the actual, well, it's close to the device. This is designed to mimic a gastroscope, which is the, a tubular camera that we go down in the stomach with to, to look uh, uh, to look for ulcers, to put in gastrostomy tubes. So this device fits over the tip of a gastroscope and it has a little needle carrier and the needle actually goes in through it. It's a, again, this is a, a short mock-up, but it goes in through here and you load it onto this carrier and you can open up the carrier and now you can actually suture. This goes on the outside of the endoscope and we control how the, how the suture is passed and you can actually do stitching in t inside the stomach. I'm not going to mock that up here. There are several good illustrations of this on the internet. But if you look up Apollo for their website, uh, there will be links to endoscopic sleeve gastroplasty or endoluminal sleeve gastroplasty. If you look up on Twitter, hashtag ESG. I, I'm really excited for this. I think this is uh, one of these tools are going to be uh, the really great choice for a lot of people who say, I just am not ready for an operation or I'm too, I feel like I'm too old for an operation or I don't want to make that commitment to, um, that's a permanent commitment as much. Um, so look that up, look up Aspire Assist, look up ESG um, or Overstitch is the name of this actual device um, because the device is FDA approved and the, and the Aspire Assist device is FDA approved. But the term ESG is really a procedure like appendectomy, so it's not an FDA uh, regulated issue. So if you look up ESG, it's not going to say FDA approved because it's just the device that we do that procedure with, just uh, for technical purposes. So um, I hope this is a little helpful, just that I think these are responsible, uh, good um, tools. I have used the overstitch device for a couple of other things for tightening up uh, gastric outlets. Um, we have not done an ESG yet in Salt Lake City, but we plan to this year in 2017. We are also ready to go with the Aspire Assist. 
Um, both of these right now, as far as we know, are going to be uh, self-pay, probably around the $8,000 mark for starters. Um, we'll adjust that over time. For some people, it may go down because their insurer may cover parts of this. Uh, for some people, it may ultimately go up depending on our cost for providing. We're, we're really sort of doing this uh, uh, at, at a not a sustainable margin, um, but we are excited enough about getting this going and finding the right people and offering this to people who, like I said, are not having surgery now. Uh, so I hope that helps. Uh, thanks very much for your attention. Bye.